Welcome to PC Analytics. Today, we're going to dig into the differences between two high performance coolers the Deep Cool Assassin 4 versus the Noctua NHD15 Chromax version. We've got our test bench right here, ready to put these coolers to the test and give you all the information you need to make the perfect choice for your setup. The Noctua NHD15 has a traditional tower look with two heat sinks and two distinct fans. However, in terms of the size, the NHD15 is much larger than most air coolers. However, the Assassin 4 has a polished look with a seamless design that makes it difficult to see where the heat sink and fans are located. Additionally, the Assassin 4 uses a pull setup with its fans, with the front acting as a radiator and the rear showing the exposed fan. Overall, this provides a novel look relative to most mainstream coolers out today. When it comes to insulation, setting up the Noctua NHD15 is straightforward, but can be challenging given its size. However, due to the seamless design of the Assassin 4, dealing with the fan wires can be a bit tricky. Additionally, the Assassin 4 cooler includes a daisy chain fan setup as part of its design, but we know you're here to see their performance, so let's dive into it. We've tested both coolers with the AMD 5800X CPU over idle, high, and overclocked temperatures, and have two sets of charts to show you. One that looks performance normalized by percent speeds, and one that looks performance normalized by sounds. In our first set of charts normalized by percent speeds, we have temperatures on the left, represented by the saw line, noise on the right, represented by the dash line, and percent speeds on the bottom. For this graph, lower is always better. At idle, the Assassin 4 in blue performs similar to the Noctua NHD15 Chromax in red. As we turn up the heat to 105 watts, we can see that the Assassin 4 outperforms across the board. However, this comes at the cost of the Assassin 4 being noticeably louder after 65% fan speed. As we pump up the heat to overclocked levels of 130 watts, we can see that the Assassin 4 slightly extends its lead. In our second set of charts normalized by sound, we have temperatures on the left, noise on the bottom, with lower being better. At idle, both coolers continue to perform similarly, and as we pump up the heat to 105 watts, we can see that the Assassin 4 begins to outperform slightly across the board. And when we push the CPU to 130 watts, we can see that the Assassin 4 extends its lead. And if you're curious on how the Assassin 4 stacks up against another deep cool cooler, the AK620, you should check out this video comparing these two coolers. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this content and found it valuable, I invite you to support us by giving us a thumbs up or hitting that subscribe button. Your support is appreciated.